<laughs> hey, you found me here at Homebrewer TV. Glad you could join us this week. We're going to get into a, a little bit of testing equipment. And of course, we're tasting some beers. So you stay with us because I want to have some fun. And I want you to join me. start to think about wanting to do simple testing of your brews, one of the most important and easiest to use is doing a hydrometer test. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you, you don't need a hydrometer. You don't need to do testing. If your beer tastes great, why worry about it? But for me, as I kind of moved along through my experience in brewing, I realized I got to a point where I wanted to understand certain aspects of what was going on, such as my brewing efficiency, maybe attenuation, and all these things can be done with the basic hydrometer, including figuring out what your original gravity is, and then you, from that you can know what your final gravity needs to be. And of course, we can figure out what the alcohol content is too. But let's just get down to using a hydrometer, which is really quite basic. Most hydrometers need to be used at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature of the solution you're doing your hydrometer test. So, you're going to need a good thermometer. You're going to find you're going to use this in other places brewing also. And we're going to be getting into those in our later episodes. But now we can at least know where we are. And there are scales to adjust for temperature variations. If you can only get it to 64 degrees, there's scales that you can get that will tell you what your hydrometer change in readings will be. But let's just stay with our 60 degrees. We've measured it with a good thermometer. And now we're ready to do some testing. Now, the first test that we're going to do is basically testing the original gravity of our wort as it comes out of our boil pot and going into our fermenter. So, catch a little of that as it's going out. I happen to use a flask. I caught some. Now, most of your hydrometers, when they're sold, will come with something that looks like a giant test tube with a nice platform. It's nice to use. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add our beer to this container and we're going to take a reading. Now notice, we're going to have some bubble buildup. That's got to be dealt with. But all we're going to do is take our hydrometer, set it into our test sample, take it and spin it. There we go. That helps knock off any of the bubbles that might have collected on the side of the glasses that's being inserted. And it's going to give you a truer reading. Now, I happen to know for this particular brew, I was aiming for about a 174, or 1.074 uh, gravity reading. And what I ended up with was a 1.076. So now I have at least an idea of what my original gravity is. Once it's done fermenting, we can now test to see what the final gravity is. And here's a simple idea for you. If you take the original gravity, divide that by four, your final gravity should be somewhere around what that equals. An example being, say your original gravity is 1.040. Well, if you divide that by four, you end up with 1.010 as what you should have approximately as your final gravity. That'll give you an idea of where you're at. So let's just say you're in your fermentation period, but your bubbler has just stopped moving. Are you finished or are you stuck? Well, here's where your hydrometer can come in again as being a good test. Take a small sample, check it. If your 
have brewed a 1.040 batch and your hydrometer reads 1.010, well, you know you're done. If it happens to read 1.023, well, we need to wait a little longer, don't we? So wait a couple days, test the batch again. If it's still at 1.023, we know we've got a stuck fermentation and we might need to add some more yeast. So, we've come out of our fermenter and now we're going to see what our final gravity is. And we're sitting at 1.018. I'm pleased with that. So that gives you an idea of, of what we're going to achieve using a hydrometer. Again, you don't necessarily need one, but isn't it nice to have additional information to be able to use to make your brews easier and more intelligent? Now, don't worry. None of this is going to waste. <laughs> no, I don't waste the beer. I drink it. So, till next time, give the hydrometer test an idea. Because you might enjoy just finding out what your brew is doing. And later down the road, we'll talk about other uses of the same simple unit. Yes, indeed, we're back in the tasting room for two more beers. And the first beer we're going to try, and watch me screw up the name, but this is the Leinenkrugel Brewing Company. They're out of Wisconsin. And what we're trying today is their Creamy Dark. So, let's give this a try. By the way, this was a suggestion by one of our viewers. So I got it in for our tasting. Here we come. Well, lovely head. Lovely dark amber color. How's the aroma? <sighs> the aroma's okay. I uh, I don't smell any great hops. I also don't smell any great malt. It's just kind of that beer smell, which makes every one of us drool, but... So, as far as the aroma is concerned with this one, I, I'm going to only give it, out of a score of 12, I'm only going to give this a 4. And we know the next one is appearance. It's beautiful. I'm giving it that 2 that we see so often. I'm kind of wondering when I'm going to see a beer that I don't think is beautiful. Well, now comes the big part, the taste. I don't exactly know what I'm going to expect to have here, as I haven't gotten a good enough odors to be able to make an opinion. So we're just going to go for it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I, I'm, I guess, I, yes, I'm disappointed. Uh, for me, the hops in this one are a little bit overpowering. I'm not tasting the malts that I would expect to taste in a dark amber. There's no sweetness. There's no, no lovely sensation. It's just more of a hoppy... Mm-hmm. Of course, if someone's going to buy me a beer, I'm going to drink it. If I've got to pay for it myself, I don't think so. It just didn't do it for me. So as far as the taste is concerned, on our scale of 1 to 20, I'm only going to go with a 5. Uh, the, hops, the hops, I think, is what got me the most. The mouthfeel. It's got a dry, but very carbonated mouthfeel. What's lingering is more the bitterness of the hops. And I love a good IPA. And we've tested IPAs here. And I have ranted and raved about the flavors. 
And that's really what I'm looking for. I want flavor. If I want to get something that's hoppy and tastes like, well, we know where I'm going to go. You know, one of the big three. So, as far as a mouthfeel is concerned, I'm going to give it a three because it has a very nice carbonation. And it is dry. That's nice. But that's as far as I can go. And then my overall opinion of the beer, I'm not really thrilled with it. I'm only going to give it a three out of a ten scale. So, 11, 13, comes up as a 17. I think this is probably one of the lowest rated beers that we've done so far. I'm disappointed. I, I, I really felt with a dark, creamy, I was going to get that creamy sensation. And basically, I didn't. Well, we're going to go on to another beer that was suggested by one of our viewers. And I love the name of this. Moose Drool. This is for the Big Sky Brewing Company. And I truly don't know what to expect. I just love the name. I think creative names are just fun. Ah, uh, nice dark. Beautiful head. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we can see right ahead that the carbonation is a little bit better. Well, is more, not necessarily better. The colors, though, I'm going to say I can't tell them apart. So, I don't want to mix these up. Because the crew gets one and I get the other. Okay, moose drool. Again, the aroma is not really hitting me very well. I'm... Yeah. I'm getting very little in that smell, so I'm only going to go with a four in this uh, aroma. The appearance, <laughs> it's the same, right? So we're going with that massive two out of three. The flavor. Well, I've had a little bit of a taste with the head getting a little bit away from me, but let's go for a real good one. Mmm. Okay, moose drool, I like it. I'm going to say it has a more malty flavor. Probably has a little of that nice crystal malts in it. And so you get that bit of sweetness and it's balanced well by its hops. This is a delicious beer. And we know which one I'm going to pick as far as the crew and me. It has a lovely, smooth mouthfeel, a good carbonation. All right, so as far as its flavor is concerned, on a scale of 1 to 20, I'm going to go with an 11. And as far as the mouthfeel, I'm giving it a 3. My overall opinion, it's a very good beer. I enjoy drinking it. I would drink it again. But we have had better tasting beers here, and I am really big on flavors. I want bold mm, flavors. And it doesn't give me as much, but it is nice. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving it a 5. So, we've got a total score here of 25. And obviously, you can tell from what I've just said, I want to, I'm going to pick Moose Drool over the creamy dark, as far as comparing the two. I like the moose drool. I will drink more moose drool. The creamy dark? If you like a dry, bitter beer, I think you'll enjoy that. Well, thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time here in the tasting room when we get two more beers to give a go. We have been receiving so many emails from you people who are watching us and it thrills us to know that you're enjoying the show. The show is for you. If nobody watches it, I'm not going to produce it. 
So, one of our viewers, though, I want to share one of his emails and his concern. This is from John. And John says, I want to get into all grain brewing, but I realize I'm going to be spending a bunch more money for equipment, and I'm worried that if I spend all this money and I'm not successful brewing, it's going to be a waste of my cash. Well, John, you need to relax. Truly, all grain brewing really is easy. Yes, you're going to be spending some more money on equipment. Matter of fact, you'll be spending more money over a period of time because as you get into it and use one piece, you're going to find you're going to want something else that might work better. But the rewards of doing your own all grain is you are going to get the finest beer you've ever tasted. And you're going to have the pride of knowing you really did it all. So, don't worry a bit about getting into all grain brewing. We'll be going through a lot of the equipment and how to do it. And yes, we'll be brewing some batches also. So John, I want you to get out there, figure out what you need, and start doing your all grain brewing. Well folks, I had a ball again on this show. You know I love to taste beer. You know I love to brew beer and I like to share it with you. So please, Leave your comments in the comments box below. It's difficult to find at times. Look for the little word that says comments. Click on it. The box opens up. Hopefully one of these days I'll get smart enough to figure out how to have the box open all the time. Anyway, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you don't like. The show is for you and I want you to enjoy it. So till next week, we'll see you here on Homebrewer TV.